I need netherite. And not just enough netherite to make a full set of gear, but like a stupid amount of netherite. So I think the coolest way to get that is to make a create machine that will completely destroy the nether all on its own. But before I can do all that fancy stuff, I've got some work to do. The house has come a pretty long way since last episode. It's kind of finally feeling more like a home now with some stuff in it than just an empty shell to make a fancy thumbnail. And as you might be able to tell, I've been doing some gathering and stuff, but that's where I run into my first problem, which is right here. Now, don't get me wrong. This chest isn't bad, right? It's a fair bit of stuff, but I don't really feel like this is the chest of a person who's ready to completely destroy the nether. I feel like it's more the chest of someone who's ready to like mildly in convenience the nether, which is not what we're going for. So this video is actually going to have a two-part plan. Part one is going to be to completely destroy the overworld, and part two is going to be to completely destroy the nether and all that good stuff. I'm going to make use of all those bookmarked blocks to make a very fancy cart contraption, but call me McDonald's because we're going to supersize it. <laughs> Okay, I think that's finally it. I had to even make an additional mixer. The crafting was taking so long to do, but I think I finally have everything. Okay, now we're down in the mine and we're ready to start building this thing. First, we gotta put down some tracks for this to actually be built on. Then we got a cart assembler to attach the contraption to the furnace cart. Might as well just toss down the mine cart right now under the assembler. Then we'll just use some linear chassis to build out here in the back. Then we'll just slap a plow on right here and and I forgot my super glue. As I was saying, we make this linear chassis sticky so it holds the plow, which will recycle the rails for us to use again. Then we make it sticky here and put down a seat so I can sit here and place torches while this does its thing. Then we make this sticky up here and put down a deployer and set its filter to place rails. And then just to be safe, I'll make this sticky and put another deployer down here. And this one can place cobbled deep slate or whatever block it's gonna be breaking so that uh, there's always something for the rails to go on. It's time to build out the front face that's going to hold everything with a bunch of linear chassis. And now that that's all done, I got to make all of these sticky. Then each one of these gets its own deployer. And these may seem pointless, but what they're going to do is place down blocks, which will then be mined. So all that nasty lava that I hear right now on the other side of this wall is never going to kill me when I AFK on this thing. Now the only thing left is to place down the drills. It's just a bit of a pain because if you right click, well, then these grab them. But if you shift right click, well, then they're facing the wrong way and you got to flip them. The only nice thing is you don't need to put drills down on the left, right or top side of the front because I actually want those to stay full blocks of cobbled deep slate. Since if I go through something like a lava or water pool, then that'll keep me protected. And then I guess technically the last but most important part is sticking a couple chests onto the back here so all the goodies can actually get collected. And if I did everything right, when I pull this lever, this whole thing should lift up. I think it worked. And if I fuel it, it should start going. Oh, it's working. Okay. Now I can pick this stuff up and all I got to do, hop on the back here and just place down torches for the next couple hours. Well, the mining is finally done, but I think there's a chance I went a little bit overboard. It took about five to 10 hours, I'd say, of just resetting the tunnel bore and then running along with it and putting down torches and then mining out all the exposed ore, which is why there's all these random pockets on the ground and ceiling. Maybe I'll use this for something someday, but for now, it's just something that looks really cool. But now it's the moment that you've all been waiting for, the resource chest. So this is the haul from clearing out this entire area. This isn't going to hold me over forever where I never have to go mining again, but for things like redstone and lapis and diamond, I really don't think I'll ever need to go mining for these again. Now I get to lug all this stuff back up to the base and figure out how I'm going to process this stuff and where I'm going to store the rest because it's definitely not going to fit in the chest that I have up there. Ah, uh, home sweet home. There's definitely not going to be enough room in this chest for everything, but at least I won't have to go mining for a while. 
This is the very last bit of the redstone. So I've got an additional redstone barrel up here now, which I'm sure I'll never even need to dig into. And then this chest is completely full with just a bunch of stuff. And now I have all these raw materials here that need to be dealt with. So I'm gonna have to add a new goal to the episode, which is kind of like a goal 1.5, which is to make an ore processing setup to actually make use of all of this. And as you can see, I've bookmarked pretty much everything I need for this, and it's gonna be a big one. So I got a lot of stuff I gotta take care of. The first thing I have to do is set up mechanical crafters to make the crushing wheels. I got 21 of them, made a nice area over here to put them down in. Now I just gotta do the painstaking process of rotating every single one of these so it pushes into one single block. Unfortunately, the mechanical crafters do need power, even if it's not much. And so can you guys guess what time it is? Yeah, it's time for more water wheels. And I will get a better power set up later, but I'm just gonna do the same thing I've got over there. I think the easiest way to get power power from these to this right here is actually just going to be putting down a bunch of cog wheels like that. And it's <laughs> it's definitely not really clean, but I think that should work. Yep. Looks like it works. It's not going to be fast and it's close to overstressing. But if I put these up here, should be a little bit better. And now that that's all good to go, it's time for another crafting montage. Well, I think this is everything that I will need to make the ore processing. And I've made a nice little staircase, nice decorative staircase, because I want to fill in this entire area right here with a really cool looking ore processing setup, and it should fit perfectly. So finally making use out of the second floor. Now I'm weird, so I'm kind of going to work backwards. And the first two things I'm going to put down are the output barrel for the experience nuggets. And then this is where everything else is going to go. And then this belt right here is going to carry all the ingots and byproducts into this barrel. And this smart chute is going to filter off the experience nuggets eventually once I have one from this depot right here into this barrel. Then we're going to have four basins outputting here all using brass funnels. And of course, these are all going to have mechanical presses on top of them since these are going to convert all the nuggets that I get into ingots. And then all the byproducts are just going to flow right through here and nothing's even going to happen to them. Now, the big mess really happens here in the back, which we're not going to be seeing once this is covered up. But this belt right here is going to carry all of the crushed ore over to a washing area. And that means that I got to have a brass funnel coming off of this depot. But over here is where the washing area is going to be. And this is going to use a fan here. And then finally, it's going to use a fan here. And then I got a whole bunch of belts that are going to go all the way around back here to loop the items down, around, and up. And then finally, a chest right here that's going to take everything in, but it's only going to output in stacks of nine because it'll avoid then random nuggets getting left in any of these basins, which means I kind of got to destroy the house real quick so that I can set this to nine. No filter needed, but it's got to be set to only output nine. And I can't forget the crushing wheels, which will go right up here. And last but not least, the input is going to be a belt right here with a hopper pushing into it and then a brass funnel right here just so it can pick up up to a stack and drop it in. And in terms of technical stuff, that is quite literally everything. It's done. The only problem is the hardest part of this whole thing is going to be hooking up the rotational power. And that is what I got to do now. I think I have enough stuff on me, but I don't have the rotational power that's even going to go in this. And then there's not a lot of room to work with in here. Oh my gosh. Okay. I think that's everything. At least all of it is running in the correct direction. And just so you guys have an idea, this is what it looks like back here. Cause all of these belts, right? All four of those belts, plus the belts up there all have a specific direction they need to run in. Now I just need to start processing stuff and then slowly pick things out to set up the different filters. I went a little bit different this time than I normally do. And majority of the filters I set with a deny list rather than a allow list, which 
was actually a lot easier. Unless I messed something up. Moment of truth. I need to put some raw gold up in here. There we go. We got the nether quartz, the gold ingots, and we got some experience nuggets. Now it's time to load literally everything downstairs into there and sit for like two and a half hours while it processes all of this. And I'm going to process it in blocks. Okay. It's all in there. So assuming nothing goes horribly wrong, this thing should just be cranking out stuff for the next couple hours. And it should look really cool while it's doing it. The satisfaction from watching this is so good. Like I said, guys, it's not the most efficient thing ever, but it looks so good while it's working. So the ore processing is finally done. This thing ran for like two, maybe three hours of just constant clanging metal noises as all the mechanical presses just fired off one after another after another. But I do think it was worth it since I got this chest right here completely filled with nuggets of experience, which look really cool. And then I got these kind of boring byproducts in this chest down here, which are useful, but they look a little bit less cool. But this chest right here is undoubtedly the most important. The resource chest is looking so much better than it was at the beginning of the episode. And that means it's time to start the final part of this episode, which is going to be to completely destroy the nether. Man, every time I come into the nether, I just hate the spawn more and more. This is just the worst spawn ever. So I need to travel into a slightly better biome so that I can set up this whole contraption that's going to destroy the nether. And it should be a lot better in pretty much any biome, but that biome. Well, this seems like as good a place as any to get started here. I just need to clear out a space so I can put down the tunnel bore, adjust it a little bit, and then clear out an even bigger space to start working in. So my plan here is really not a complicated one to start. I'm going to put down the tunnel bore and I'm going to send it in one direction to make a long tunnel, just like I did in the overworld. And then that space is going to be used with a completely different contraption to clear all the way down to bedrock. And that's what's going to get me all the ancient debris. So this is going to be an absolute mess. I feel like when I put this down, let's just see. Actually, it was a pretty decently sized room. Now, unfortunately, these are all filled up, though, with deep slate. And now I get the fun of changing changing all the filters on these to netherrack and then putting the drills back down and orienting them properly. The only nice thing about this is netherrack gets mined a lot faster than deep slate. So this will be way quicker to clear out even the same size area as I did in the overworld. Okay, I think everything is set for the nether. All the deployers on the front have been changed. I changed this deployer here too. I'm going to be really sad if I fuel this up and something goes wrong and it just falls into a huge thing of lava. Please do not let that happen. This is promising. Oh, hey, and it's not even just one promising start, guys. Oh gosh, okay, here's the test. It's not going to put down a new floor, but it is going to put down enough for it to move on. I probably should have had it put down a floor because this is going to be nerve wracking to go get this thing back. Can I like get close enough to pick it up right now? I need to build around it. Oh, why is it so fast? Why did I make something that's so good? Let me pick you up. Oh, okay. Now it just needs to be run perpendicular to this whole area to clear out even more. So I should be good to just flick this thing on again and and fuel it up again and do the exact same thing. Well, it seems like everything is pretty smooth sailing over here. It's just going to take a little bit since it slows down a lot whenever it hits anything like nether quartz or the gold nuggets. So I'll probably have to do this maybe like another 15 or 20 times to get the initial area cleared out. And then that whole area is going to go all the way down to bedrock. Oh, no, I knew this would happen. Here we go, big boy. There we go. Problem solved. Yeah, I might have to rethink this one a little bit. Oh no, I was supposed to grab that sooner. So the first stage of the nether destruction project is finally complete. And I have to say it was way worse than I thought it was gonna be. The amount of work to clear out this much space when you have a tunnel bore really isn't that bad. But as you can see around here, there's quite a fair bit of mobs that have spawned and all these little holes in the ground and fires lit around them. Those are from me failing to hit back the projectile to kill a ghast. And I've, I've failed quite a few number of times, but now it's time to start the second stage, which is going to be clearing out this entire area all the way down to bedrock. And to do that, I'm going to have to use my entire full inventory, which I hope has everything I'm going to need to make another contraption. So to start things out, this whole machine is going to be running on a long line of gantry shafts that go down this direction. And to attach stuff to this and move it along, I'm going to need a gantry carriage facing down. And then I'm going to need a rope pulley under that to lower the drills down. Quite possibly the 
most annoying part of this, I'm going to need a long line of linear chassis. And then under them, I'm going to need another long line of drills. I'm so worried that if I do this backwards, I'm just going to fall in a pit of lava. I need to be really careful of that. Oh my God, this is so awful. And of course, I also just barely don't have enough drills. This is why you always double check your numbers. Otherwise, you'll end up like me where I now have to go all the way back and craft more drills. Oh my God. Okay, and finally, all the drills and linear chassis are down and everything should be glued together. And now it's time for the boring redstone and storage part. Oh my gosh, I think it's all done. Now I'm gonna walk you guys through all this stuff that I did. So right here, I have a deployer, which is just constantly going to be attempting to place down more gantry shafts. And then I've got two redstone contacts here and an observer. The observer is gonna send a redstone pulse anytime this is placed down, which happens when it gets down to bedrock and when it comes back up to here. The last piece of the puzzle is this sequence gear shift right here, which is going to move this piston over one block and then the whole thing is going to happen again and it's going to do that all the way until it gets to that far side and finally the coolest part is this whole thing is going to be powered by four magma wheels back there because we can't get water in the nether oh and then i almost forgot this thing right here this is what's going to be powering the deployer and the rope pulley so it's the mobile power unit and to keep this whole thing from overflowing i have a nice brass funnel right down here which is set to only dump out netherrack so it should keep this relatively clean so it can fill up with things like nether quartz and gold nuggets and most importantly some ancient debris Oh my gosh. Okay, it started going. I've been making adjustments to this thing for at least like an hour now, and I think it should be all set to run on its own. I had to adjust some of the times and some of the directions, but it should be going, and it's not going to get rid of the lava as you can see, but it'll go all the way down, and then it will, once it gets to the bottom and can't go down any further at bedrock, it will come all the way back up. The only downside is because I have to use a timer, there will be a 20 second delay every time it's going to move over one, which is probably going to have to happen like one to 200 times. So that's definitely not great because that's, that's a decent chunk of time, but I can just AFK for this whole thing. The only problem is I have to reattach. Where is it? This brass funnel. I have to reattach this when it comes back up because it needs to be on the back end of this. Once it moves over one to have room to travel down the whole time. If everything's done correctly, please please work over it bugs out so it moves it without having to break the blocks then it's going to take another 20 seconds but here we go now it's going to go again and then it will automatically come back up and just keep doing it over and over and over again so thankfully now the hard part is over but i get to afk until this entire area is cleared out and then i get to come back and collect all my ancient debris okay it's been a while so after about maybe eight to ten hours of just sitting in this hole in the wall the nether miner has completely destroyed this portion of the nether. I actually downloaded a mod so that it would get rid of all of the fog just so that you could see the sheer amount of destruction that came from this. And you also get to see the one funny thing that does not come from a vanilla nether destroyer, which is obviously all of this lava. The nice thing is because of how create contraptions work, this lava doesn't actually matter. It's able to collect all the blocks perfectly fine and go right through the lava. The only reason I did this was to get a bunch of ancient debris. Now, before I set this to run and went AFK for like an entire night, I did change it. So the only things that should be stored in these chests right here will be gold nuggets, nether quartz, and of course, ancient debris. So I'm guessing all of these are not totally full, but it's the moment that you've all been waiting for. It's actually the moment that I've been waiting for mostly, but I'm really hoping I got a lot from this. So let's start from the very beginning. We got a stack of ancient debris in here, and then I'll have to move these gold nuggets and nether quartz later, but I have a feeling there's gonna be way too much for one inventory. Okay, nothing in here. Is that is that where it ends? 
Okay, so that's about, what is that? So six and a quarter stacks of ancient debris. That's not too bad. I can't imagine I'll ever need nether quartz again after this, but it's gonna take a lot of trips to bring all of this stuff back. I'm really only concerned about the ancient debris right now, but now it's time to disconnect this so it doesn't ever attempt to go down and back up again if it gets reset as I reload it in. And I gotta get out of the nether because I am so tired of seeing just all this red and gray. It's awful. I think I did this to show that I actually dropped down over there when I cleared out this whole area initially. I had the great idea that I would mark where that was knowing that eventually I would have no floor to walk on. So now I gotta dig my way back over there. Oh my god, okay. Okay, this is like the worst thing ever. Please, this is, I knew this was gonna happen. Okay, I need to just please let reloading get rid of my momentum so I can live. Come on. Where are my blocks? Where are my blocks? Oh my gosh. Okay, it did. It did. It worked. Oh my gosh. Oh, I'm like not even taking any damage. Do I have fire protection on some of this stuff? Oh, I do have fire protection. Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay. That's why That's why we're all good here. We'll just pretend that didn't even happen. I almost just died with an entire six stacks of ancient debris. And I mean, even if I didn't have that on me, it was just going to be the end of my world there. So anyone else uh, having heart palpitations right now? Let me just take a look at this real quick right here. It's like you don't see it because it blends in so well. Look at that right there. I thought I would see one I eventually hit it, but this is why I didn't see it. It's because the netherrack texture, man. I'm done with the nether for a very, very long time. Oh, grass. Oh my gosh. Oh, I love the grass. I genuinely don't think I've ever been so excited to come back from the nether, considering I've probably been in there now for about 15 hours straight between building everything and then AFKing. Oh man, home sweet home. And now finally, the fun part of all of this, which is going to be smelting down the ancient debris, making a bunch of netherite, upgrading all of my stuff, and unfortunately, I can't do anything with create to increase how much of the netherite scrap that I get, which eh, it's whatever, but you know, this is this is plenty. It's not a netherite beacon. Maybe I'll do that later, but it's way more than enough to make a full set of gear and tools and all that jazz. So we'll just load all these bad boys up. Oh my gosh, I don't have enough furnaces in my house to cook down all my ancient debris. Rich guy problems. I think this is the last of it. Yup, there we go. So about six and a half stacks of netherite scrap. And now it's time to just make the netherite ingots. Wow, I've never had one where I haven't been able to just shift click it all in here. Okay, there we go. So it's looking like I've got a little bit over a hundred netherite ingots, which isn't that many blocks of netherite, but like I said, it's more than enough for what I need. And now it's time to just upgrade a bunch of tools and my gear. Would you look at that, guys? It only took 172 days to get all this. That's pretty much record pace. You may have noticed, though, the enchants on these really aren't all that great, which is a bit of a problem. So next episode, I guess I just have to make an experience generator. 